In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. So we gather together to celebrate Wednesday of the second week of Easter. We're mindful of the gift of the risen Christ and the hope that he brings to our lives. Mindful of his presence among us, let us together pray for the grace to be open to him, while at the same time acknowledging our sins, seeking God's mercy to prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gift us with the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you send us forth into the world to be your witnesses. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again. We earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess in unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out, and said, Go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in prison, so they came back and reported. We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, They were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them. The men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord Lord hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, 
the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God the good news, the gospel of the Lord. So we hear the famous John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. You know, there's a reason that so many churches have their children memorize this important verse. There's a reason there are signs at so many major sporting events that say John 3.16. And the reason is simply this. It's a very important scripture verse because it reveals to us so much about our God. In fact, many scholars, many people have described this verse as being the gospel in summary form. So what's important about it? Well, it speaks of God's love for us. And God seeks us out, sending his only begotten son. And this is in contrast to so many religions that simply emphasize our own individual search for God. But the gospel emphasizes and again, again and again and again God is seeking us out. And we see that so clearly in the gift of Jesus. We see that so clearly in his teachings and his parables. Our God seeks us out because our God loves us and wants union with us. Our God is not about condemnation. We condemn ourselves through our own responses. Our God simply wants us to experience the fullness of life, fullness of life in Him, in the Trinity, and ultimately, of course, eternal life. So today, thank God for the gift of His love and ask God to continue to open your heart and mind so that you can experience the fullness of His love. It's an incredible gift. Together as God's people, let us now bring our prayers and petitions before our God. Let us pray for the church, the people of God, that we may continue to be open to God's Holy Spirit, God's great gift of love, 
so that as we receive God's love, we may share his love with our world. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our world leaders as they care for their people. We pray that you fill them with the spirit of wisdom and compassion, particularly as they care for the most vulnerable among us. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are sick in need of prayers for healing. We continue to pray for those who have contracted the virus. We pray for those who battle cancer, those preparing for surgeries, recovering from surgeries, those in our hospitals and nursing homes, the many people that struggle with mental illness and addictions. May the healing spirit of Christ uplift, renew, and strengthen them. For the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray, too, for the many people who care for our sick. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the aides, and all health care personnel, that you continue to bless them in their important outreach and their important ministry. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those who have died. We especially remember Jean and Elaine Etchart. We remember Bob Stricker, Robert Kent, and all our beloved dead. May they share in the fullness of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. And let us pray, too, for those who grieve the death of loved ones, that they may find comfort and hope in the promise of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. And for your prayers and petitions. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who shows us so clearly the depth of your love for us and at the same time leads us back to you. Give us the grace to disciple our lives after him. And we ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former, way, from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives.